Hi, I'm going to show you how Spanning Tree Protocol works with hubs. In order to understand that, let's first take a look at a normal network. So here I have three different switches. Um, they're all connected together. It's running Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, at least the show command output. Uh, that's another story <laughs> for another day. But anyways, um, here we have the root bridge. So all ports on the root bridge are designated. You know the drill. Um, go watch my other videos if I haven't. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, so S2 and S3 find their root ports going to their root bridge. And then they uh, follow the protocol for uh, designated ports and alternate uh, block ports. So fairly fairly simple, easy. Here are the, the, the bridge priorities on all the switches. And then the MAC address second part I just put there um, so all of it checks out so let's go ahead and put a hub right here let's just gum up the works let's see how it actually interacts with spanning tree so here we have a hub <laughs> with uh, young granny smith here surprisingly hubs are hard to find I had to find it on eBay it was kind of ridiculous and they're expensive too which is kind of weird but anyways uh, when we put this in here, you'll notice that this segment here, all of these are connected to the same, all these ports, collision domain, which is really weird. So if you understand hubs, all they do is repeat electrical signals. You can think of this as one wire. So all of these ports, all of them are connected together. <laughs> And then the switches are like, what is going on? I'm seeing my own frames back on my own ports. And it's just mass chaos and everybody's just so confused. So as you can see here, it changed a little bit. So let's go back to uh, the modern network. You'll see the left side here are all alternate roles, uh, alternate ports in their block, in a blocking state. And then the right side here are designated port roles in... Um, a uh, forwarding state. So that's just the way the protocol works out. If you follow my other videos, you'll see uh, why that is. But if we actually look here, switch to this, where we connect all these four ports here to a hub, you'll see that it changed a little bit. The right, the left side still has alternate um, block ports, but you'll notice that we have a designated port here, forwarding state, and then a backup port role in a blocking state. So effectively, um, there's only one designated port on this network segment because all of them are in the same collision domain, broadcast domain here. Only one can be forwarding onto that segment. Otherwise, if you have two forwarding in the same collision domain, it can cause loops. And you don't want that in spanning tree. That's just very, very bad. So. To run, let's run through this protocol. Let's figure out how it actually came to this decision. We'll experiment a little bit too along the way. I find hubs uh, kind of fun and interesting and help out uh, with understanding how spanning tree protocol works. So in my other videos, I talked about um, the way I find find all the roles is I find the uh, root bridge, then I find all the root ports, then I find all the alternate um, I find all the designated port roles and then alternate, you know, and then the rest are all in blocking state. So I have these kind of like three sections you go through. Um, just it's very easy to understand. It's not that bad if you watch the other videos. So uh, let's run through it here real quick. So as you can see here, the S1 is the root, the root bridge here because it has the lowest bridge priority. 24, uh, 577, um, and the rest are... 32, 768, well, plus one for the VLAN one, so this would be 24, 5, 7, 6, I think. Anyways, any case, this wins because it's the lowest bridge ID, which is made up of the bridge priority and then the MAC address. So all of the ports on the root bridge become designated ports, forwarding. And then if we just look, let's pick S2. So which path has the lowest cost to the root bridge. So obviously it's not through here because that would be a cost of 19 plus 19. Uh, the shortest uh, path, lowest cost path is through here, port 24. So 
obviously this becomes the root uh, port forwarding and uh, same for here so on this switch 3 it doesn't make any sense to go this way the cost is too high it goes out uh, port 23 over here so fairly fairly simple um, where the complicated part is uh, when you try and find the designated ports and the uh, backup ports um, and the alternate ports here so it gets a little confusing so let's break it down so in the protocol what you first kind of want to look for is the alter um, the designated port roles in my second section that I have and then all the um, alternate block ports that's how it usually goes for each link but for hubs it kind of messes up everything because everything's on the same collision domain so you can't have on each link between the switches designated alternate block designated alternate blocked and what have you because they're all connected you, you're gonna have loops only one can be forwarding like this and the rest are all blocked when you're connected to do a hub like this so how do we find that out so it's actually kind of simple it's very similar to any of the other roles like the root port roles so let's 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 find the designated port roles for these segments here between these two switches all right so the first step in the Spanish protocol is to find the lowest cost to the root bridge so switch two and switch three both have a cost of 19 so it ties right so uh, that's not going to help us the next step in the Spanish protocol is to find the lowest bridge ID so which has the lowest bridge ID s2 or s3 neighbor so uh, both have the same priority so let's look at the MAC address so we'll see 0013 0013 60 AA 60 AA then we have the number 1 and this is a 0 so 0 is lower than 1 so s3 wins uh, at th that side that roll so this side becomes the designated port roll but the the problem is we have a bunch of ports all in the same network segment it's not like we're looking at individual network segments each link is on its own uh, collision domain as with regular switches hubs are a little different so what we have to do is keep going down the protocol so what we want is only one port in a forwarding state so as we go down so we looked at the lowest cost to the root bridge then we found um, the lowest uh, bridge ID so this side one and now we have to look at the lowest port priority so all of these are 128 by default so that doesn't help us so then the last tiebreaker would be the port number right the lowest port number as you can see FA 0 slash 1 is the lowest port number so that port there um, becomes the, the designated port roll forwarding and the rest go into a blocking state and their role is kind of interesting it's a backup right so if you keep adding more and more links between this switch to the hub all of them will be in the backup role and they're all in a blocking state so all of them are just blocked so backup uh, port role basically means that if for example this one designated port fails this would um, let's say this goes down this would turn on and be the backup right it's the backup for the designated port roles just like we have the root port role we have an alternate port role so if the root port goes down it can use one of the alternate ports instantly and comes right up doesn't have to go through those listening learning states whatever actually RSTP only has I think learning state but anyways getting off track here um, this switch this port becomes the designated port role and all the other ones connected to this hub you kinda have to look at it collectively that's the way I look uh, look at it on this side of the switch connected to the hub become in a blocking state backup port roles which is pretty cool so uh, let's go ahead and look at switch 3 but before we do that um, the other side um, you'll notice is one side is designated um, the other side is blocked obviously in the other videos right can't have both designated um, so let's put in an alternate state role blocking state so 
no matter how many you add here, there will always be in an alternate block state. So let's go ahead and test that. So let's look at um, switch 3 here. Let's pull that up. Um, where are you? Switch 3. Let's switch 2. So we'll do show... No, let's go back. Show spanning tree. You'll notice that uh, port one, port one is designated. Uh, port two is a backup port role and blocking state, and obviously 23 is is the uplink. So let's go ahead and add. Let me go to my switch, actually hub switch, whatever. Uh, let's plug in another port. I find this to be kind of interesting. So let's add a port between switch three and the hub. Let's just do that. So let's just add another one. Let's get crazy here, man. So let's see what happens. Okay, up. So what I did was I added another port. So it'd be, let's see, port three to the hub. This is port three bad number three to the, to the hub here so let's go ahead and see what the state is show spanning tree you'll notice that ta -da, port three is in a backup port roll blocking state which is pretty cool so uh, that's that um, the other side should be the same you add more ports all of the other sides are just an alternate block state, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and change this. Like, uh, I'll show you each, um, I guess, step of the protocol and see why it matters and how it changes this topology here. So let's start at the very beginning all over again. Now that we understand how these uh, port rolls are the way they are. So in the first step of the spanning tree protocol here for designated ports, we want to find them for each network segment. Uh, we look at the lowest cost to the root bridge. So both of these have a cost of 19. So let's change that. Okay, let's make this side win. <laughs> let's uh, rig the rig the system. So S2. So what we'll do is we'll go to uh, that port, that root port. So interface slash 24. And what we'll do is we'll say spanning tree cost of, I don't know, one. So let's make it win that side. Let's see what actually happens. So if we do that, we do, do show spanning tree. You'll notice, dude, it changed. Probably should have showed the output before, but anyways, you'll notice that this side no longer has alternate block port rolls. You'll see, look, one's a designated and one's a backup. Let's see, listening states. I don't think it's done yet. Let's see. There we go. Takes like 30 seconds. So you'll see that port one here is a designated forwarding uh, port and port two is a backup blocked. It's pretty cool. So it won that side. So let's, let's go through it in our heads. Uh, that side won. So the next step would be to, because we can only have one forwarding port on that network segment, so we have to keep kind of chop narrowing it down. We'll skip the bridge ID because it's the same. Both of them are, you know, the same, whatever. So you'll want to look at the port priority, uh, which are both 128. Right here you can see. So they both uh, tie, and then the last would be the lowest port number, which is 3. So that's why... Um, that side one designated and the rest are all blocked. Every other port on the network segment is going to be in a blocking state. So that's why that port, specific port one on that network segment. So let's let's change this. This is even more fun. So how do you think we would make this, just think in your head, uh, the designated and all the rest become in a backup port roll blocked or whatever? Think about it. Let's go through the steps. Mm-hmm. Port priority. 
you can actually change that. So let's change it. Let's go to port two. Uh, interface port two spanning SP spanning tree port priority uh, and what are those steps? I think increments of 16. So by default, it's 128. Let's change it to 16. Let's take a look at the output. Dude, it switched. Look at that. So now port 2 on switch 2 is the um, designated port, and all the rest are in a blocking state, which is so cool. Look at that. It's still in a listening. Got to go through the learning. It's in a learning state now. One thing I probably should address is that you probably might be a little confused with the show output. Um, maybe it's a good time to share that story. Uh, the show output here for Spanning Tree is a big fat liar. <laughs> right now we're actually running the old legacy... Um, Spanning tree protocol. I think it's 802, 802.1D or something like that. Um, it's the older one. So it has all those uh, different states, the, the blocked, not the blocked, um, let's see. So disabled, listening, learning, forwarding, and those, um, that older protocol only has the, the roles uh, root port, designated, and then I believe non-designated port. So those are the blocked ones. So with uh, the newer RSTP, I think it's 802.1W or something like that. Don't quote me on that. The, the newer one, um, it's showing the actual output of that right here, all these different roles. You have the root, you have the alternate uh, port roles. Let's see, root, alternate, uh, backup, designated, all those port roles. And those uh, states only go through discarding, learning, and forwarding. There's no... Uh, learning, listening, one of the two. <laughs> I have to look back. But anyways, the point is, uh, just be careful when you look at the show output because it it may not accurately reflect what's going on in the network for real. <laughs> but anyways, um, with RSTP here, with this show output, um, we actually changed it. So now this is the uh, designated forwarding port because we changed the uh, priority. Let's see, where do we do that? on that port from 128 to 16, something lower to break the tie between uh, ports one and two. If we look at the previous output, just to double check, where are you? Let's go up a little bit. There we go. One was designated and two was backup. Now it's one is backup and two is designated uh, 40. So that's pretty much it to it i mean it's pretty basic and it's i think it's really cool so just think of all of these ports that are on the same network segment as a whole right and you run through the protocol in your head first you find uh, the lowest cost of the bridge and you say this side is the lowest cost bam so this side wins okay so now we got to narrow down the ports because they're all in the same network segment collision domain we can't have a whole bunch one has to be forwarding, the rest will have to be in a blocking state. So then we run down through the protocol and you say, um, let's see, uh, the next one would be lowest bridge ID, that doesn't really matter. Um, that would probably be tied, just trying to think. Then it would be the lowest port priority, they both tie out, 128. And the last one would be the port number, so then this side would win. Um, I haven't updated my diagram. This is still the old one. Um, right now it's for switch two. It's actually switched right now. So if we look at switch, uh, let's do three. The other one. Uh, let's double check. You can see this is the old show output before I made those command changes on switch two. As you can see, it accurately reflects my diagram here. So port one uh, originally was designated, port two is a backup, port three is a backup. Remember when we added the ports? Um, to show a spanning tree, you'll notice that, oh, look at that. The other side on the same network segment, collision domain uh, with the hub, 
All of them are in an alternate role, and they're in a blocking state. So, there you go. It's not actually that hard. I would recommend um, just getting a hub, playing around with it. Uh, it's really fun, honestly. It's really cool. Surprisingly, they're hard to find. <laughs> Switches are so cheap, right? And hubs are so expensive, you're thinking, what? I think it's because they don't make them anymore. So, I found it on eBay for like 20 bucks. That was a Netgear old Ethernet hub. Surprisingly hard to find. you got to be careful what you look for. Um, but that's basically it. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.